music fans out there. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of Coda Country Chats. Today, we have Justin Colvard. How are you today, Justin? Doing wonderful. How are you doing? Oh, doing so well. And I just wanted to have you on the show today so we could talk a little bit more about your next upcoming single. We're going to talk some more about all of your career stuff, a little bit of your background, but let's focus first on the single that you have coming out called Gulf Coast Interstate. Um, it comes out on December 8th for those who are listening. Um, I want to hear a little bit about the writing process on that. Tell me more about the inspiration for the song. Well, just just like a lot of families that have come down here like in the past we found ourselves coming down here i don't know four or five years in a row and uh, every single time we'd come down here we'd always talk about wanting to to live here and wanting to be here and not wanting to really go back home yeah um and we had no idea that everybody else who comes down here or almost everybody else you know they all it's all the same thing We'd find ourselves going out looking for houses, going out and uh, just kind of just window shopping, just dream shopping. Um, and I think on the, the last year we did it, we went to Panama City. My mom passed away back in March of 2019. Mm. And we went to Panama City. And we just, whenever we got back home, we got back in the pool that day. And my wife and I, we looked at each other and we we're like, are we going to do it this time? Or are we just going to, you know, just kind of keep on uh, doing the same thing that we've always done? And and uh, she called her employer like the, the following Monday and put in her notice. We called our landlord and um, well, anyway, you know, we just we kind of cut off all ties in the Midwest where we had no choice but to move. We wow. didn't necessarily have to come down to the Gulf Coast, but uh, but we did. So anyway, that that's kind of what the general gist of what how this song came about. Um, just I didn't realize so many people did the exact same thing that we do. Uh, every time they come down for vacation. And so I figured a lot of people can relate to to the words of the song for sure. Yeah, definitely. So let's talk a little bit about that too, because uh, in reading your bio, I saw that you first, you know, lived in Texas and then you made the move to Nashville and then you made the move to Missouri. And right. then that's essentially where you were when you decided to move back back uh, uh, down to the, the Gulf Coast. Um, so what do you think it is about driving right. on that Gulf Coast interstate that, that makes it so special for you and your family, you and your wife? I just, you, you kind of, you just get a sense of freedom, you know, just a sense of, uh, maybe freedom's not the right word, but just a sense of like, it's just, if you haven't ever done it, like, it's just a sense of, like, uh, you just get an overwhelming feeling of no worries, if that makes any sense. You know, it's uh, it's one of the most relaxing. The Gulf Coast is any, – any coast, I guess, essentially, it would be pretty – anywhere where there's sand and waves is probably pretty relaxing. But this is what I know over here uh, – or down here, rather. And, um, I mean, it's just – it's something I, I feel if – even if you don't ever want to live down here, coming to the Gulf Coast or going to any coast is something that anybody should experience. I completely agree with that. As someone who's kind of grown up going to Panama City Beach and going to Destin and hanging out a lot on 30A, I completely cut, know where you're coming from there. The beach is one of my place, favorite places to be anyway. Um, so, okay, so tell me how living in um, the Gulf Coast area now how does that work with your music career? Um, well, just kind of it, the the music scene here. We're actually in Gulf Shores, Alabama, is where we're located now. Um, but the music the music scene here awesome. is uh, it's yeah. different than any any music scene I've ever ever been a part of. I guess um, <clears throat> here they book like it, it's they they book out six to eight months at a time here you know whenever back in the midwest you know you're going month to month trying to get these bookings and stuff so um it was it was hard at first to get my foot in the door at a lot of these these uh venues down here because how they did their booking and stuff but um the music scene down here is absolutely incredible right there's so many talented artists and and what's cool is 98 98 awesome. percent of all the artists they're all in it to help each other down here, which is something totally cool. It's not, there's plenty of work for everybody. 
Yeah, that's good to know. Just because I, I've also heard that that in the area where you live, there's you know a huge growing community of musicians that just love to love to play and are really good at it. And so that's awesome that you've kind of found your your niche there, your 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 market, your community there. So what? Tell me what got that's you cool. started. I mean, it's, like, yeah. it's playing down here. This because there's so many tourists and stuff down here. It's like you're pretty much playing to. You're traveling the world playing anyway at this point. I mean, essentially, just because you play at the same place seven nights a week and never see the same face. Wow. That's that's pretty interesting to know, though, because I, I know, you know, it's great to get a brand new crowd of new people that are going to have the name Justin Colvert in their brain and, and take that home with them and, and then go stream your songs and, you know, go listen to Gulf Coast Interstate and all that kind of stuff. That's amazing to know. So tell me. How did you get started playing music? What was kind of the draw for you? Man, I I grew up my my dad and his entire side of the family, they've always they've always played music. Um my dad was a drummer at heart. He he plays every instrument, but drummer is what drums is what he his go-to was. Um and how how I got involved just obviously just being around it. I I first wanted to be a drummer. And then uh, at 10 years old, I was visiting him up in Missouri um, for the time. And he had had this 12-string Yamaha that was just always sitting in a closet. And I just asked him one day, I was like, Dad, can you teach me how to play the guitar? You know, And he taught me, he taught me amazing grace. And uh, I went back home to Texas to my mom. And I was like, Mom, can you? I was like, you got to go buy me a guitar. You know, So she went out to Sam's Club and bought me the little $99 guitar that they have on the, they used to, I don't know if they still do it, but they used to keep them on the top shelves, you know, of everything. And, um, <laughs> and I just, I, I, I yeah. taught myself how to play the guitar from then on and just kind of, just kind of started playing out slowly, but surely started playing, started playing out at the Opry. So that's where my dad used to play a lot. Um, it was a place called the Wiley Opry in Wiley, Texas. Very cool. And that was actually the first place, first gig that I had which was pretty cool yeah so I guess let me let me kind of get a, a, a timeline of of when you started playing in Texas when you made the move to Nashville all that kind of stuff how that went too yeah so like I said 10 years old is whenever I first picked up a guitar um, I don't think I actually had my first mm -hmm. paying gig until I don't know probably 16 16 years old or so um, awesome. I found I found the yeah. Texas music scene, which was absolutely like I I, I didn't really I, that was about, about the time whenever Red Dirt music and stuff was just coming up, um, and I, I had a fell in love with that um, from 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 the first time I heard it from like whenever I was sixteen or seventeen years old, and uh, like I said, I started playing around bars and stuff. I did that for about two years, and whenever I graduated high school is whenever I moved to Nashville. I'm, uh, I think like a week or so after I graduated, ended up moving out to Nashville by myself, and I was out there for about two and a half years, from 2003 to 2005, um, and did a lot of really cool things. Did a lot of cool things in Nashville. Uh, uh, played music. I, I was uh, I got employed with the Tootsies, which was pretty cool. I'm trying to remember. It's been so long mm -hmm. ago. I um, <laughs> I'm so. taking you down memory lane for sure. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, so yeah, we did. I, I did the Tootsies <laughs> thing. I I sang uh, when I was in Nashville. I I did demo. I sang on demo records for Capital or demo songs for Capital Records, which was pretty cool. Did that for about six months. Yeah. Um, and then, like I said, 2005, I ended up moving back to Texas where I met my first wife, uh, got married, had a kid, and we ended up in Missouri in 2009 because I got divorced from her. And then, uh, and, and up, in, up in Missouri, my dad and I actually, we got a band together called the Taste of Texas Band. And we started playing around a lot. Yeah. We did a lot of really cool things. We got to open up for Miranda Lambert, uh, David Ball, No Justice, Jackson Taylor in the centers. We did we did a whole bunch of really cool shows and uh, kind of made a name, little name for ourselves in the Midwest. And then uh, three years ago, like I said, 2019, we moved we moved down here. It's actually was it 2019? I think it was the end of 2019 we moved down here. 
Well, and that seems like kind of the perfect time, 2019. Well, I say I say perfect time. It probably didn't feel like the perfect time at the time because of the pandemic. Because I know, you know, when you move down to a new place, it's nice to go out and get acquainted with the area, but then you're, you know, stuck in your house for however many months because of the pandemic. So, but at the same time, it's kind of nice to get acclimated and, and get used to where you live. And then you had all that space to kind of prepare and get ready to become a musician and write more songs and have all that time. Um, so yeah, I, I'm interested to know, um, all about like the live shows that you have played recently or that some of the live shows that you're going to play in the near future. Um, tell me about, we'll first start off with what do you think your favorite live show was? Uh, man, favorite. That's, that's hard. Uh, I guess there's, that's a hard, that's a good question. I've never really thought about that. I, uh, <laughs> I, I try to stump I mean, the, you. I, I don't yeah, well, you know, pride myself well, in it. But. <laughs> I guess there's different definitions, I guess, of what's your favorite stuff. I mean, because there's, there's cool stuff that happens at different shows. You know, like getting to play for Miranda, you know, back in 2000, whatever that yeah. was, 2010 or whatever. I mean, that was that was super cool. But then, you know, I've, I've played at some places down here that have just been absolutely wild, you know, and just makes – like at the end of the night, you're like, man, I wish we were still, I wish we could go back and start this night over, you know? So it's, uh, I, I don't, I guess I, I, no, that I don't know the answer to that question. That's crazy. It that made you think, one. I like that. Yeah. That it made was, you uh, think, it made you reminisce a little bit just to see what you really, what you really like about, <laughs> each, yeah, for sure. about each show. Cause I, that, like you said earlier in the interview, they're all different. Well, here, I, I'll, yeah. I'll tell you this, just being down here at the Gulf coast, my, the most favorite memory I've had so far is, I got asked to be a part of uh, the Frank Brown International Songwriters Festival last year. Wow. And I think uh, that was probably the most, the most, it necessarily wasn't the most fun, but it was, I, it was a room full of 300 people that you could hear a pin drop that they sat there and appreciated your original music, which was really cool. Oh, and very, a very humbling experience as a songwriter probably in a room full of songwriters and everybody's hanging on every word and and maybe not critiquing but definitely enjoying and and, and loving that that's an incredible experience so i'm so glad yeah go ahead it, it wasn't <laughs> just any songwriters though. i mean it was these were guys that were have written hits for merle haggard alan jackson uh some of the biggest songwriters in the apps in the in the world that that you're playing these songs you know that you wrote with your pen and paper, you know, and then you're in the house, you know, that you never really thought anybody would hear. I don't know. It was, it was just a cool experience for, uh, for, for those, that caliber of songwriters to, that caliber of songwriters to, to be able to sit there and appreciate the music that a no name, you know, like myself or whatever had written. So. <laughs> That's amazing. Absolutely. So, okay. Now that you've kind of told me a little bit about that awesome experience, tell me what's up, what's coming up for you? What's, uh, what's next on your calendar? Uh, well, I'll be in, uh, tomorrow, actually, I'll be in Orange Beach, Alabama. I'll be in Orange Beach, actually, for the next three nights or so at a couple different venues. Um, live Very bait cool. in Orange Beach on the 29th. And like the first and second of December, I'll be in Orange Beach again at the Island Time Daiquiri Bar. And then I'll be in Perdido Key, Florida on the third of December. Um, all my dates are on my calendar on my website at jcmusic850.com that uh, anybody can go to. I keep, I'm pretty good about keeping it 100% updated all the time so people can know where they can come find me. That's awesome. You know, okay, and I, right before I hopped on here, I saw that you made a graphic for me, which is great because I'm going to use it too, um, for uh, like a like broadcasting that you were going to be on the podcast today. So I thank you, first of all, for, for doing that. And two, I wanted to talk to you because it looks like you're pretty tech savvy with that kind of stuff. I just, I found out at, uh, I found out, you know, shortly after being down here that, you know, there are a lot of music lovers 
around here that are locals. It's not just the tourists you're playing for. And yeah. with that being said, I just, I know that everybody's not going to come search out your page a hundred percent of the time, you know, so you just kind of, right. you have to become good with, with the, with, with the plaster and your flyers on different, the Facebook pages and stuff like that. Cause, um, yeah, I can tell I, it, I it's definitely given me from being so doing it so consistent with doing those flyers and stuff. It has mm -hmm. given, I mean, I've, I've gained a lot of followers from it, which is, it's really cool to see. That's incredible. Just to know, you know, that, that somebody's out there listening and watching and, and following along with your career. That's really great to know. So, okay. We talked a little bit about live music. We talked a little bit about your upcoming single. Tell me about more of your discography. If you have a song in your catalog right now, released, unreleased, doesn't matter. Um, which song do you think is one of your favorites that you've written? And this also may be a hard question too, but something that I'm, I'm interested to know. Well, that, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's why you get paid the big bucks here. Cause those are incredible questions. Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, um, and see, now I'm going to, I'm going through my song list here, just kind of looking at the originals I've had, mm -hmm. man. I, so just a little backstory. I, I had quit drinking. I'd put down the alcohol, uh, not this past June, but the June 24th of last year. So I've been, as of this, wow. uh, four days ago, I've been sober from alcohol 17 months. Um, and wow. I've been a songwriter for a long time and I've, I've done, oh, thank you. I've, done, I've been a songwriter for a long time and, and I've, I've, I feel like I've written some pretty decent songs and pretty cool songs, but I don't think, yeah. uh, I don't think, I, they they got better after I'd stopped drinking. Um, I've got a couple, like I said, Gulf Coast Interstate is probably one of my favorite songs that I've written just because it's so relatable to myself and to millions of other Americans that come down this way on a, on a yearly mm -hmm. basis. Um, but I've got one that's in the chamber that I wrote called Party of Six. We just had a little baby boy three months ago, almost four months ago, be four months <laughs> old in three days. Um, which yeah. turned us into a family of a family of six. Um, and then I've got another song, which I don't know if I'm supposed to be talking about this yet, but I've got another song that's going to be releasing after <laughs> Gulf Coast Interstate that is called me. It's called me, her and tequila. Obviously that's ironic. I don't drink yeah. it, but, uh, but it's still <laughs> that, that, I don't know. Just, I like, I like a lot of the songs I've, I've been writing, but definitely the ones over the past, just, just recently are, are definitely hitting home the hardest and, and giving me the, the feel goods, you know, as a songwriter. Yeah. Almost. It's kind of like you found your place and, and now the songs are just kind of flowing and it, and you're coming up with like the, the most creative, the, the most sentimental songs to you. And that's, that's great to know. That's awesome to hear. So tell me, um, I have lots of questions, obviously. Uh, <laughs> Tell me, um, from the new, the new that we're not going to, you know, disclose too much about song that you have coming out, um, was that a solo write or was that collaborated with somebody or tell me about the writing process on that too. Yeah. You're talking we're Gulf Coast Interstate. Is that the one you're talking? No, for um, talking about the Gulf Coast. no, for uh, me, you, and Tequila. Yeah, the one that you just talked about. Oh, yeah, the, one oh, of the new me, ones. Me, her, have. and Tequila. Yeah, no, it me, was uh, tequila, it was yeah. a solo. Yeah, it was a solo, right? And I was just, I've got, like, in my songs, I've got, or in my in my phone here, I've got it's a start of songs. You can't see it, but it says start yeah. of songs. So that <laughs> that's just if I get an idea, I've got like over 200 and 200 in there. And I was just scrolling through one day and I do that every so often. And I had seen, uh, I had seen something about tequila. So i looked at it and, um, I don't know about three hours later. Or so I had the, I had the song written. I was just sitting in my living room one night and my, my wife was out of town and I had written it. So but yeah, I was that wow. one, that one and Gulf coast interstate. I, I had written by myself as well. Um, but I do have a handful of co-writes that I am super proud of that I am going to be putting out 
uh, some of those songs eventually, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Well, okay, let me ask you this, too. Now being an established songwriter and a musician putting out your own music, if you were to go give advice for those who are starting out their music career, what set of tips or hacks or anything like that would you give to new musicians? Um, be nice to people. Mm -mm. Um, smile. I mean, that's yeah. the, the music part of it's easy. Um, it's all the other yeah. stuff that's not that, uh, and I'm 38 years old and I'm, I'm just literally just learning this stuff. You know, the music part is completely like, that's simple because we've been doing it all our life. It's what we love to do. It's fun. You know, yeah. um, it's all the yeah. other stuff that comes with it that you have to, you have to make sure there's, there's so, there's so many different sides to the music world that, uh, that a lot of people don't don't see and understand and get um it's not just as easy as just taking your guitar and going up to a stage and and, and playing music that that's the easy part for us that's the part that's like that's our getaway yeah. the uh the the hard parts are behind the scenes you know whenever i'm home i'm constantly working i was at a birthday party a couple weeks ago i shouldn't have been working whatsoever i actually wasn't at first but then it just it crossed my mind. I was like, hey, I need to make a flyer for this show. So I was sitting over in the corner just at this birthday party. <laughs> I was working, you know, and and there was another yeah. there was a, a bunch of artists there. And, and one of them came up to me. He's like, man, are you are you do you ever not work? And I'm like, I was like, man, I just need to finish up this one thing real quick, you know. And uh, but the, the biggest advice, like I said, just this be nice to people. You know, this this world's already messed up enough. Uh be nice to people, be humble. Uh, the ones that have the, like the older, the older generation, you know, there, there's a lot of guys that we call, I call local legends around here that have been in this mm -hmm. music business and music scene around here, uh, that are in their sixties and seventies years old. They've been in, doing this down here for 30, 40 years. And I will sit and listen to them all day long whenever they have to give me advice about something because they know what they're talking about. Uh, the younger me, I wouldn't have listened to a word that they said, but uh, but now I truly respect it. Yeah, now that you've kind of lived it and and you're so, in their shoes and they're you know giving you advice from from how they lived and and just going back to some of the things that you said about being nice, being humble, and also talking about you know all of the other jobs that come along with being a performing musician. I mean that's that's a big deal in itself because I. Like you said, I don't think a lot of people realize how much self-promotion, how much community and collaboration being musicians takes. Like it, it really does take so much more than just, you know, showing up and, and you know, playing a show. Like there's so much other prep work that goes into it. So I applaud you for, for all of that. And yeah. then also for, for using that as kind of, well, yeah, I mean, I mean, that it's not even necessarily really something that has to be done, you know? the the all the all that stuff that i normally necessarily do and a lot of it might even go unnoticed or unseen you know i don't know but it makes me feel better knowing that that information's out there if somebody wants to see it you know and and it's funny like a lot of times whenever i don't put anything out there like for a day or something or if i forget to put out a flyer or something i will get messages from people i'll be like they'll be like hey are you not playing here or you know so so i mean oh I, I know for for the most part that stuff works but i don't know i do it for peace of mind i guess a lot too yeah yeah definitely well and it it helps you out in the long run so i mean it it, it makes sense yeah definitely well i tell you what justin i've really enjoyed this conversation today i've enjoyed our chat talk to me tell me, me is there anything else that you'd like to promote before we hop off the call today so i uh i got approached by a local company last Last November, um, they're called Beach Billy Lifestyle. It's a clothing company that is based <laughs> out of uh, Perdido Key, Florida. And they had asked me if I wanted to be a brand ambassador sponsor for them. So I just wanted to show their little graphic here. Awesome. I don't know. It looks bad. Is it backwards to you? 
Was it backwards? Or is it... Okay, cool. Yeah, so Beach Billy Lifestyle. And they also gave me a little, uh, they also gave me a little code to give to people if anybody wanted yeah, any. Yeah, uh, very cool. Got, so they've got this, they've got. No, it's perfect to me. Yeah, it looks great. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got t-shirts. <laughs> um, they've got a whole bunch of cool stuff. But if anybody wanted to do that, they could go to beachbillylifestyle.com. Yeah. And at checkout, just use the code JC10 and you get 10% <laughs> off uh, all the beach billy wear. And another thing that's cool about this is not only is it clothing wear, so they do hoodies, they do hats, shirts, koozies, stickers, but it's also a TV show. Um, so they've got, you can go on, yeah, the Amazon Prime, you can go on there and uh, you can watch their mm -hmm. TV show. And they're about to start season two, it's about to start filming for season two. Um, which is pretty cool. Oh, wow. And the guys who did the, do the filming for them, we actually just shot a music video for my new song, Gulf Coast Interstate. Um, and the production crew from Beach Billy Lifestyle, they came and shot the music video for us, which is pretty cool, which is going to be out, I think, around uh, December 15th. So I think we're going to get an early Christmas present with the music video. Oh, that that's incredible to know. That's so great. I'm so glad that you told me about that. And I'm sure the listeners out there are really excited to to dive into the music video, to hear the single release, and now they get to rip some cool swag from Beach Billy and all that kind of stuff. I love hearing about that. Thank you so much yeah, for sharing that. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it was thank you for having me. This was cool. I uh Yeah, I really appreciate you coming on I, the show I, today. Whenever I whenever I got asked to do this or whatever, I, I went and kind of did, did a little research and stuff and just kind of, yeah. I think it's cool what you're doing. Keep it up. It's cool. It, uh, you got a cool thing going on. Well, thank you. Well, I appreciate you so much for doing research in me. Um, listeners out there, make sure you check out Justin Colvert's new single that drops on December 8th, Gulf Coast Interstate. We can't wait to hear it streaming across all the platforms. Thank Justin, you. thank you again. And this is our episode of Coda Country Chats. Everybody have a good day.